I've always stood by the opinion that every hero is only as good as their villain. Luke Skywalker would be nothing without Darth Vader. Marty McFly wouldn't be as cool if he didn't have someone like Biff Tannen to go up against. And without Voldemort, the entire story of Harry Potter wouldn't even happen. The hero-villain dynamic in any story is almost as important as the story itself. I mean, without a good villain, what purpose is there to cheer for the hero? Which is why, today, in celebration of villains, we're going to be taking a look at a few Disney villains who, for one reason or another, just didn't quite make the cut. Captain Cleaver, Who Framed Roger Rabbit Originally conceived as an antagonist for the 1988 film Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and being based on the character of the same name from the book Who Censored Roger Rabbit, Captain Cleaver is Toontown's tough, toon human police captain and the head of the TPD Homicide Division. The character would have been very confrontative with the main human character of the film, Eddie Valiant, the tough, gristled detective with a distaste towards toons. It's currently unknown as to why the character was removed from the film. I reached out to Gary Wolf, the creator of Roger Rabbit and author of the original book, to see if he had any insight as to why Cleaver might have been removed from the film. And unsurprisingly, he didn't really have an answer for me, stating that the script went through many, many changes and that characters were being added and dropped left and right. So, who knows why Cleaver was removed. Gloom, Inside Out Inside Out is the rare film that accurately portrays mental health, and as such, it's not really a movie that needs a villain. But the movie did originally have a villain, in the form of Gloom. Gloom would have essentially been the personification of depression, and throughout the film would have grown bigger and bigger inside of Riley's mind. And even at one point trying to prevent Joy from getting back to headquarters. Now, in the final film, Gloom is technically there, as towards the end, there is a moment where fear, anger, and disgust are, are unable to make Riley feel anything, and it's at this moment that the console starts turning gray, and it's thought that this is essentially Gloom, which would make sense, because when you're gloomy or depressed, you just don't really feel anything. So I feel that this works better instead of having Gloom take a physical form. As cool as that would have been to see. Supe, Kingdom of the Sun. The original version of The Emperor's New Groove was very different than the hilarious buddy movie we know it as today. Originally entitled Kingdom of the Sun, the movie would have centered on a greedy, selfish emperor named Manko, who meets a llama herder named Pacha, who looks exactly like him. So, for fun, he decides to trade places with the Llama Herder. Unbeknownst to them, however, the evil Empress Yzma is enacting a plan to unleash the Incan god of darkness, Supe, upon the world. Yzma wants Supe to block out the sun forever so that it can give her eternal youth. As the sun gives her wrinkles and she believes that living in a world of darkness will take those wrinkles away. This version of the movie got very far into production, and there's even a cut song on the Emperor's New Groove soundtrack called Snuff Out the Light, which would have been Yzma's song in this version of the story. While Manko, later renamed Cusco, Pacha and Yzma would remain in the final version of the film, Supe would not. And it's honestly kind of a shame, because it's not often that we get Disney villains that are just beings of pure evil. Like... I guess Chernabog would technically count, but we're talking about a Disney take on an Incan god of darkness. That just sounds cool to me, and I kinda hate that this version of the movie doesn't exist. And hey, maybe one day I'll do a whole video about Kingdom of the Sun. The story behind it, and why it eventually became the Emperor's New Groove, is a very fascinating one. So who knows, maybe you'll see that video one day. The Snow Queen Frozen. Very few abandoned, cancelled, or in this case reworked characters have as much of a history as the Snow Queen. Various takes on the classic Hans Christian Andersen tale The Snow Queen were attempted many times over the years by Disney, dating back as early as the 1940s. However, it wouldn't be until 2008 when production would start on a film titled Anna and the Snow Queen, later renamed Frozen. In early drafts of the film's script, Elsa would have been a ruthless, evil monarch who wanted to rule the nearby kingdom, which was home to Queen Anna and her husband Hans. 
This version of Elsa also would have had control of an army of evil snowmen, which just sounds awesome. I built a horde of evil snowmen, they're gonna take over the world. But everything changed once the song Let It Go was conceived. Originally meant to be a villain song, the producers thought that it made Elsa seem too sympathetic, but they absolutely loved the song. So they decided to rework the movie because of the song. Co-director of the film, Jennifer Lee, later went on to state, The minute we heard the song for the first time, I knew I had to rewrite the entire movie. Which honestly kind of explains a lot. I'm not going to say Frozen is a bad movie. It just has its issues, as, as any movie does. And personally, I feel that changing it so that Elsa was no longer the villain was a mistake. I feel that she should have been the villain from the get-go. Because we really don't get that many female Disney villains these days. I mean, the last one we got was Mother Gothel from Tangled, and that movie came out 10 years ago, so... I don't know, I just think it would have been neat to see Elsa fully fleshed out as a villain. It would have been cool. And it would have saved us from Hans. I'm not gonna say Hans is a bad character, but he is a bad villain. And maybe one day I'll make a video all about him. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you.